This week's podcast is proudly brought to you by Glossily Sports all-new post-workout dry shampoo, Ready Sweat Glow. Made by Aussie runners for all hair types, especially for your post-long-run sweaty hair. Ticking all the boxes, it's natural, non-aerosol, and absorbs sweat. Feel like you need some Ready Sweat Glow in your life? Check it out at glossilysport.com.au and use the code RUNNING20 for 20% off. Welcome to episode number 250 of the Inside Rain podcast. Thank you for joining us for another week. Big show coming at you. We've got the Australian Half Marathon Championships to talk about. See the surf happened. Um, some big marathon announcements and all the other stuff we do on this podcast each and every week. Welcome to my co-host. is up in Canberra, Bradley Croker. How are you? Good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, going well. Thanks for a Monday night. Thanks for joining me for another week. Good What's to get the band, band back together. It is good to have the great man alongside us, my other co-host, the 214 man, down in Anglesey tonight, Julian Spence. Welcome back. Thanks, boys. And um, I listened to the episode. Very good last week. Jeez, Christian loves to bang on, doesn't he? Yeah, we, we, thought, we thought your weeks were long when you recap weeks, but <laughs> Jesus. Oh, yeah. We he, did a bit of a mini interview, though, of what he's been up to. <laughs> but you didn't ask him any questions, though. Fascinating training though, Moose. Did you in, what did you think of his training philosophies? The big the two big, really big days. Yeah, well we'll see. Uh, the proof will be in the pudding. Let's put it that way. Let's see if he can break this two twenty because um I don't know. I don't I don't know why you don't need to go and do this weird shit. We know that. He he but he always tells us how much he loves Sean Crichton interview. <laughs> but yeah. then he goes off and does this weird shit. It's Good like point. which one is it? I've got to talk about the Sean Crichton interview at the end of the episode, so remind me about that. Uh, Moose, I can hear the dog in the background. How's things in your life? Yeah, dog. New North. computer. Yeah, the computer is now, the, I think Apple built in that sort of dead battery after six years or so, so my laptop has to be plugged in at all times now, so I thought it's probably a chance to um, update considering I run three businesses off the bloody thing and I'm on it like 22 hours of the day, so... I need that. I need a new barbecue too. That's the next thing I need. Um, dog's just actually humping his toy right now, which is <laughs> quite funny. Um, but yeah, no, last week uh, wasn't here. Baby was sick. Um, uh, I, there was another reason I wasn't here, um, and that's going to maybe affect my capacity to be on the podcast the next few weeks as well. So it's. Uh, the, I guess I'll just tell you what happened. Um, Took my mum over to physio friend, Joe Pashley, Ali's husband. Um, he's an expert or a specialist in um, like vertigo for, uh, you know, when people get vertigo yeah, and, yeah. and loss of balance, dizziness. So my mum's been complaining of that lately and she's supposed to go away to Europe on a walking trip. She couldn't walk because her balance was all off. So I thought I'll take um her to see Joe. uh and so Joe snuck it like snuck us in an appointment cancellation and um i dropped her off she went in and then um she sends me a message like 20 minutes saying can you come in and i went in and, and Joe was sort of different like he's very jovial character and he was i could tell he was sort of pretending to be quite calm but at the same time, very stern. And I thought, what could this, like, how could he be possibly be something serious about this? But um, he pretty much said, you, you've got to go to the hospital, like, right now. Um, this is, and uh, for a scan, for, like, because I'm doing a few tests. Things aren't looking right as if they, like, should be. Uh, sort of got me a little concerned. 
you could go tomorrow, but I would really want you to go now um, to the hospital and I think it would be worth it. And so I thought, oh, shit. Um, obviously, like, scared us both to, for, to hear Joe sort of say that with such a serious sort of tone. So we went into emergency department straight away. This was at 6 o'clock on... Um, on Monday last week. So at this point, I thought, oh, I might still be able to get back for this podcast, but um, we waited six hours. So six hours in that emergency department, like in the waiting room. Have you guys ever had to deal with that? Not, not for six hours. Not six hours, like three, three or four maybe. Yeah, three, three or four is still a long time, but fuck, six hours, like pretty hard work, especially when you're sort of worried about what you're going to here um but we eventually got in oh and the other thing like people would come in and you could tell the people that had been there before that kind of knew the system I reckon there's a few key words if you mention it to the first nurse um they get you straight in because there's a few of them that kept saying like short of breath uh fainting all this sort of stuff and they go straight through um whereas we just said oh our physio told us to come in and and the lady looked at us rolled her eyes and said oh the physio told you to come as if like what what a waste of time. What would a physio know kind of thing? Exactly like that. And so we sat down. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. Six hours later. Um, they got uh, mum in for a CAT scan. So um, it's like a brain scan, I guess. <clears throat> and then we sit in emergency. It's about 2 a.m. Doctor comes in. Um, like the emergency doctor, he says, so we've looked at the scans and all this, and you've had a stroke. Uh we're not sure when um, he's asking all these questions and it wasn't lining up like the questions he was asking, like he wasn't getting the answers that he thought he wanted, but he said, I've seen the scan and you've, um, you've, you've had a stroke. And, and so we were like, oh, this is a bit like, this is obviously a big deal, someone having a stroke, but it wasn't as bad as what it could have been. Um, Cause we were worried that there would be some sort of, um, mass or like tumor, um, something a lot more, uh, I guess, grave than a mild stroke. Um, so he, he left the room, let us talk about that for a while. And then he came back five minutes later, asked a bunch of other questions and said, I've actually just read the report from the um, scan. You've, you've got a mass in your brainstem, like a, um, like a tumor. Um, so that was like pretty heavy to hear considering by that stage it was maybe like 2 2:30 in the morning um kind of haven't slept eaten much and you're sitting there in like the emergency department um so it was like two bits of hard hard heavy news really in quick succession um and and especially like it felt like there was a little bit of like if you got this one wrong, how can you, if you got the first one wrong, mm. um, you're already like, how can we trust the second one? And then there was like, it just didn't feel like it was the way it was supposed to be played out or told. Like, a, like it felt like this doctor was kind of jumping ahead of everything. Um, anyway, it was fucking scary. It was a heavy thing to hear. So he basically said, you've got an MRI book for tomorrow morning. Um, we'll know more about it then. Uh, that's it. Like, we'll know more then, and then you'll have a specialist talk to you. So that was like probably the worst of everything. Was probably the worst like six to eight hours after that. Um, I just slept like on the hospital, like the floor next to her, and we just waited until the MRI people came and um, they took her took her for an MRI. Um, and uh like the next bit in, like that one no sorry that was at like the, the mri got postponed to the afternoon so tuesday afternoon we still hadn't heard anything um and then like the the next bit of news was that the, the mri came back they found it like the cancer was benign um it was operable so like and um so that was actually quite a good bit of news on the roller coaster of everything <laughs> uh so she was trans transferred to St. Vincent's Hospital that afternoon. Um, I went up, stayed in a hotel. I couldn't visit her until the next morning. Um, 
And then we spoke to, she was straight into the neurology department. She spoke to the neuro, neurosurgeon and they said it, it is operable, but it's quite risky. Like where it is, is precarious. It's going to be a 12 to 18 hour surgery to remove it. We need a combination of different surgeons there to take care of it. You can't just do it with, oh, well, you probably could do it with one, but he said that the results, like the evidence shows that, um, if you have specialist surgeons in the room all operating together as a team, you have much better results. So they, they waited. They, they told us it would be about five weeks before they could get that group together. Um, and, yeah, so that was a couple of days in Melbourne just sort of hanging around, getting more scans, doing getting more, I don't know, tests, more doctor stuff, all this, you know, you know all the shit that hospitals do. <laughs> Um, is, is there the risk um, of it deteriorating in that five weeks or is it all pretty stable? It's it's a slow grower, so there isn't really a risk. Um, it's more just about, like, the headspace knowing that it's there now. Uh, like, even just from her hearing the news and finding out what it was, her mental, like, capacity or her... Her cognitive stuff declined greatly. All of a sudden, she went from being like a strong, kind of stubborn lady to just being a frail, sick old woman, just knowing that there was something wrong with her. Um, and I just like, so that was, it was going to be a hard five weeks, but they actually called yesterday, I think it was yesterday, um, or Friday, and they said the surgery, they, they can move it forward to this Wednesday. Um, so she goes in on Wednesday, which means... Like I'll be up in Melbourne from tomorrow onwards, um, and yeah, just uh, it's it's been a it's been a wild week. It's been a crazy week actually to to see like to have all this happen, and then you get some bad news, but you also get some quite relatively we'll call it relatively good news, um, and then just to see like we're seeing we're in this sort of like neurology ward up the top level of St. Vincent's and there's um there's everyone there I guess has some sort of brain disease or brain like a, and it's yeah it's like fuck there's a there's a lot of sick people out there um it's a sad place the hospital like yeah. different worlds in there isn't it you've got to forget until you go in there yeah and the I mean we always we always talk about like childcare workers but the, the nurses and the the doctors like just the conditions they're under how hard they work just the like how they remain so positive and like upbeat to everyone that you can see they come in contact with it's uh it's pretty impressive actually and how skillful they are like imagine the qualifications and the intelligence of those people that are going to do the operation for your mum mate 18 hours surgery yeah. and then he walks in the room and then has just like the most lovely conversation if, with with someone he's never met before. He's yeah. probably been in surgery for ten hours before this. He's probably tired. He hasn't been home, like seeing his kids. Uh, yeah, you just it's pretty. It's actually unbelievable thinking about their 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 life and the the stress and conditions they're under. Well, if you blokes watched Emergency, which is um, it's filmed at St Vincent's. It's no, on, so, yeah. So it's always on after the podcast. So it's like on at eight forty-five tonight. So like, it's one of my favourite shows. Like, I don't watch a lot of free air TV, but that is awesome because you do get a real appreciation for, as you said, Moose, like how caring and positive they are to complete strangers. Yeah, um, and, and obviously the stress that this, well, how calm they are under stressful circumstances. Yeah, that that emergency department, like the the emergency waiting room, is is rough. So we, we all waited six hours in a pu private hospital emergency department, which means you pay like 250 or something to see the doctor. But there was a domestic happen in front of us in that waiting room um, and the security and everything. And it was just, <laughs> it's just not a very like healthy environment. You got about six or seven really sick people sitting together in pretty close proximity. Um, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't, I'm thinking this is like, all, get all the sick people together in one little room. Um, and then they sit there for six hours with no food or uh, you can have water, but yeah, there's pretty much just no food and 
yeah anyway it's uh it's forgotten about i've kind of felt like it it's sort of that that six hours has disappeared compared to the last seven days yeah big week for you though this time last week you're probably sitting in there waiting and now you're on the mic and uh yeah know a bit more about what's happening yeah we do that's like it's a good thing um it's a good made, thing to know made running seem pretty insignificant doesn't it these sort of, these sort of um uh experiences yeah i know and it makes it like I've tried to keep running just to keep a routine. Um, initially, I did. I felt like I wanted to get out there. I'm like, oh, I could probably sneak out for a run here, or I'll get out for a run while when I wake up. But then towards the end of the week, like it just accumulated, and I was just sitting there on Friday, like, Ugh, I really don't want to go running right now. Um, and I did anyway, but I didn't want to, and I found myself cutting everything short and pretty much just not enjoying it uh but it's good for me i think otherwise i would sit at home marinate and feel sorry for myself so it's good to have running as part of a routine i don't think it's the actual running part that's good it's just the routine part mm. but did you feel like it cleared your head and stuff a bit when you got home well maybe tell us about your running week tell us about oh yeah well what you actually did do and then yeah how it made you feel um so yeah on oh well let me just sorry I, yeah no you're right i've put you on the spot there i've just um, yeah it, it was just it was almost just a week of jogging again i did one workout on the friday uh i did a run to the barn because we were coming off albert park so i was um i didn't i wasn't sore at all actually i i finished albert park and i there was nothing like the cross-country events like the bandura where i was totally smashed i um i got out on monday i ran with brie so we went out together uh, we had pier in the pram, so we just followed this route where we can run with the running pram, um, and it was quite fun actually. Like it was pretty fast for a pram run. And then um, the next day, looks like I ran with Bree again. Um, I did, so we were just running together. Uh, and then I was in Melbourne um, the next morning, so I was staying right next to the hospital up in Fitzroy. I ran down through the MCG through the tennis center did a lap of the tan and then ran up um home back up the hill kind of is really close to where you were staying for Melbourne that time where your accommodation got cancelled right oh yeah yeah that's yeah, the hospital's on that corner isn't it or that near that whole block yeah yeah so um it's a fair way uphill from the river back up uh and I just put I just ran a bit faster like a bit of a run to the barn I didn't care what a pace I was going I just made sure it was a bit harder um, and it definitely did feel harder. Uh, so next morning, went out for a jog, tried to get to Prince's Park, hit all the Monday, hit all the Melbourne areas. Prince's Park's a good spot. There's some fucking good spots to run in Melbourne. Like, it, it's got to be one of the better running cities in the world. There's no forest, I guess, but it's still, um, it's still like, the urban parks are quite good. Uh, so I actually ran into a mate, Richie Johnson, who runs for Geelong. He uh he was finishing off his workout, so we jogged back together back to um like Fitzroy Collingwood area. Uh, next morning, next Arvo, I, I did a um workout down in Anglesey. I just did 20 minute threshold. Um, so I got my my heart rate ended up getting up. I think I averaged 165. I didn't go over what I should have. Um, 324s, which is pretty much spot on what I think my threshold is right now. The good weather's helping, like. So it's almost perfect conditions. I don't even remember feeling a breeze of wind or or uh, the, the temperature may have been like 10 or 12 degrees, so perfect. Uh, jogged on Saturday. I worked Saturday, full day in the store, so half an hour before I went to work. And then I did like, I'm not even going to call it a long run, but it's a longer run than what I normally do. So I did 64 minutes, nearly 14K on the old loop that I used to run as a daily um, so that was it. Of the week I think I ran um, 67k maybe. So mm. that's like that's the biggest week I've done. And like I got out today and I felt good. Like my body is starting to ca catch up almost. Like it's starting to accumulate these these weeks. And I was running along croaks. You know what I'm going to say next? Covering the ground. Covering it so well for 2k. I was. I, 
I'm gonna. I've never. I haven't run a 414 kilometer for a very long time on an easy run, and it was like good heart rate. So I feel I don't have the strength to do anything long, but I reckon um, my sweet spot right now would be around 6k. I don't think I got any any not anyone know a 6k race coming up. 6k weird distance sand and realize about a month ago. i know that was my sweet spot i need yeah. that again tan's a bit short for me uh ballarat's a bit long for me hot, you do the hot, hot, lap, hot lap of mount panorama in uh october oh that's, that's 6k that's like 3k uphill 3k downhill but they have a road race there uh yeah one lap of the the racetrack do they really yeah, yeah i didn't know that is that a new thing uh, I don't think it's been around for that long. Um, obviously, it hasn't been on the, like, the last couple of years. Like, I was half tempted to go up and do it just for, I don't know, just for the novelty of it. Yeah, um, is different. that Bathurst? Bathurst, yeah. Where they have the cross country? Yeah, or where they have the, or where they have the V8, Bathurst 1000. Like, that's, you know, that's, where, where, that's what's made it famous. And, um, yeah, the one lap of the track is just over six kilometres, but it's um, predominantly, like, climbing for the first 3k and then pretty steep downhill back to the finish is it that steep it's it's a decent i think it's a decent climb yeah okay mm. yeah just on their website 23rd of october 2022 free plug for them yeah <laughs> yeah not sponsoring the show but there you go mm. looks all right there yeah never heard of that before neither have i so will you do the 15k moose or a bit long and a bit too much going on uh, yeah, we'll see how it all goes. We'll see how the recovery process is for mum when she comes out of surgery. Uh, I'll, I'll try. I'll enter, and I'll I'll plan on being there, but I'll pull I'll pull back if um if it's a bit much. Yeah, fair enough. Well, all the best of it all. Another big week coming up for you. Thanks. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm off to Melbourne tomorrow. Thanks yeah. for sharing, Moose. Yeah could have easily just said your kid was mm. sick and not able to share that with everyone but um yeah thanks for your honesty well it'd make it like yeah I, I got a fair few questions asking what was going on so i thought i mean i'm we've well, always been pretty honest on here yeah. um there's a few things that we haven't talked about that's been even heavier than that and i'm happy to keep them private but uh this one here was like it, i think it is good to to talk about that way like if someone comes in the store or talks to me, it's like I could just be honest with them. Yeah, and I think on that Patreon show, I might have told people there was a medical thing going on, so I probably shouldn't have done that without getting your permission. So sorry. No, no, no. That. It's all good. That's no problems. I don't care. Bradley Croker, over to you. What did you do for the week? Uh, well, I had my first, I guess, proper training week since Gold Coast, um, I reckon. So it was, a, it was a pretty good week in the end. I did an hour... Uh, Monday afternoon 407s and then Tuesday after work um, a treadmill session so I did my standard six minute reps uh, I just did five of them and I did them at uh, seven and a half k an hour on the treadmill which is like 326s um, which for some context before Gold Coast I was doing six of these at uh, a k an hour faster so 18 and a half k which is more like sort of 315s 316s I think um and yeah like it felt okay heart rate was uh like got into like the mid 160s at its highest where which is probably similar to what the heart rate would have been before gold coast running a kilometer an hour faster um but it was good just to tick off you know a decent session and i'll I'll build on that i'll do six minute reps again tomorrow um probably start off at the same pace and just see how the heart rate reacts if the heart rate's a bit lower um, I might pump it up a little bit more or um, do an extra rep. So that was Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, um, starting to – so three weeks out of four in a month, I want to get through like an hour 45 to two hours on a Wednesday and like close to two hours 30 on a Sunday. I just want to – I just want to see how my body reacts to doing like two decent long runs a week. So I did – um, 25k on Wednesday, uh, 406s. So that was an hour 42. Um, yeah, we had. I don't know about you guys. We've had a lot, of, lot of rain recently. So Thursday it was, um, yeah, pretty wet. So I just ran on the treadmill after work. Um, 437s according to the treadmill for 10k. 
then decided to do another treadmill session on the Friday. Um, I just find when I'm getting back into it, the treadmill is a good way for me just to control everything, like from a heart rate point of view. So I did my um, session of seven minute tempo, two minutes solid, 90 second jog, and I did three sets of that. Um, and because I was running a kilometer an hour slower on the Tuesday, I basically just knocked everything back by a kilometer an hour for this session so that it would feel similar to what I was doing before Gold Coast. So the tempo was like 330s per K. Um, the solid two minutes was about 310s or 19K an hour. And then I was jogging at 14K an hour. So I averaged about 330s um, for the whole session for 30 minutes. Uh, Saturday, just an hour um, out at Mulligan's. I didn't do my normal two laps because um, it was pretty wet in one section. So I just sort of did the main trail out and back, which um, holds up a little bit better. So that was 4.13s for the hour. And then two hours 15 yesterday, um, half in Mulligans and then half on the bike path around Yerribee. So 30, just under 33.5K at 4.02s, um, two hours 15 for a week of yeah 132, which, um, yeah, it's a good place to start. Like pretty Like 132 k in singles i think it's a pretty good week so um yeah so another sort of similar week to that coming up i like this from you a lot of strength in there yeah so i'm going to start so this month's cycle that i've got is going to start from this week in terms of i've sort of mapped out the sessions that i'll do each week um and they're basically trying to do two hours on a wednesday two and a half hours on a Sunday for at least the next two weeks. And then um, the third long run of the month, I'm actually gonna go and do like just a salt. Like I'm not sure how far I'll go yet, but I'm gonna put on like the super shoes and just roll like 340s um, for an extended period of time. And, and over month on month, just try and build that out a little bit. Mm. Yeah, so. There is some news about your marathon announcement coming up a bit later on, but we'll save that for later in the show. Do you want to hear about my week? Yep, hit us with it. Big What's week this? by the looks no, of no, it. No, wait, 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 wait. What's this news? You got a marathon? No, I've got a segment a segment plan, Moose. There's been a lot of Australians announcing their marathons recently, and I've got um I've got some news coming up. Do you want me to just do it now? Save people. Do it now. I want to hear it. I want well, to hear I've got it. no I've got no news. Yeah, you're in the whispers section. So the big news to come out of the marathon announcements was uh, Jess Stenson, Elwes Wellings, going to do New York Marathon in November be the fifth marathon in 13 months for Aloise because she did London, Melbourne, Nagoya, Commonwealth Games, and then she'll be doing New York. And the other big piece of news was Pat Tin and announced for the Chicago Marathon in October. Not sure if you boys saw these, mm -hmm. some big names and some big marathons. Mm, yeah, well, that's, I, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of marathons for Aloise, isn't it, in, in a short period of time. And some people can handle it. Some people can get away with it. Um, I'm not sure it's optimal for nailing just one great fast time to, to do it like that. I guess if you do in New York, you're probably not after the fast time. But maybe if it maybe it might not be great for one big performance. You know, a lot of the big marathoners they kind of peak for a race rather than um, go from marathon block to marathon block. Yeah. Was um. Yeah. Because. When, how many weeks away is it? Sunday the 6th of November. So I'm trying to think the gap in weeks between the Com Games and New York. Was Com Games three weeks ago just gone? Uh, uh, two. And this is two 84 weeks? days divided by seven. This is 12 weeks. Yeah, so 14, 14 weeks if it was two weeks ago. 14 weeks between races. Mm. Which is an average. I think someone did some math on that an average of one marathon every 10 weeks. Does that work out for you in 13 months? Yeah. For Aloise. Yeah. 13 uh, months. 13, 13 months oh. divided by five. Gee, just everyone's just crunching calculators <laughs> here. I think it is. It's about 10 or 11 weeks, 10 and a half yeah, to 11 2. weeks. Yeah, 2.6 months. Yeah. Um, that, uh, so that's it's difficult when you factor in a recovery period as well as a taper. In, yeah, into that yeah. it's difficult to get it right like I, I would have trouble planning for that anyway well, she kind of nailed London debut then went and PB'd at Melbourne then went and PB'd at Nagoya Commonwealth Games you know 
that was probably the only one that wasn't standout-ish, I suppose. Um, I reckon I I reckon I may have asked her about this in Launceston Brady about you know backing up from marathons and she put a lot of it down to the shoes. She felt mm. like she just wasn't as banged up at the end of a marathon compared to probably what people had been before super shoes. Um, so you know it might change. I guess it might change people's ability to do more marathons with these shoes, um, but it still doesn't factor in like the mental fatigue that goes into preparing for a marathon is you know is, is pretty high um and the, the shoes don't help that aspect of it yeah mm. and jess hasn't had the same lead into the com games race wise that um aloise did but she'll be trying to turn around that same 15 14 week gap from com so, games gold to new york it's also how you survive as a professional athlete mm-hmm. is yeah. his appearance fees and, and and showing up to um to get paid, which is taking yeah. advantage, like Jess taking advantage of winning this race at Com Games. This is the these are the fruits of that. Yeah, for sure. And what about the Pat Tiernan news to Chicago? This would have got you excited, Moose, because I think at the end of last year when we do our prediction show, I reckon you might have predicted like expect something big from Pat Tiernan. I think well, the we're, marathon. We you're the, the only one that has. You're the only one that's prediction hasn't come true this year. <laughs> well, this that was not my predict. That was not my only one, was it? Um, but yeah, okay. So Pat Tiernan, we haven't seen like a lot of, um, exciting stuff come from Pat since the Olympics, have we? We we haven't seen anything groundbreaking since then. Um, so this, like he's changed groups since then as well. Uh, it'll be, it'll be quite interesting to, to see how it all plays out. I mean, if he goes and runs a half marathon soon, be interesting to see how that goes down. Um, that's going to be what is that September or October in Chicago? October four, maybe or something. Yeah, I think uh, it might be the same weekend as um, Melbourne. Melbourne. Maybe yeah. October two. Yeah, it's the eighth of October actually. Oh, okay. So it's the ninth of October, Chicago. Um, yeah, I've got no idea, but based off his strength, how he runs, seems to pace stuff pretty well. Except for the Olympics, where he nearly got it right. Um, just... I, think we- I think weather might be a factor because he he has said that he doesn't cope that well in the heat, and Chicago can get pretty hot. Um, mm. So hopefully it is a hopefully it's a good cool day for him. Yeah, it can also get very cold. It's just it's super random one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit Mel- it's a bit like Melbourne, Chicago. It's mm. around sixty fifty five this year, the very start of the year. Houston half. Oh, did he? Okay. Oh, yeah, Houston half. I remember he's that. He's around 27, 45, and 13, 19. Like, not amazing, but he's been, he's, he's fit, obviously. Yeah. Good yeah. times going in. Yeah. And Lisa so, Waitman, Berlin. Well, this is the unofficial part of the show, so they haven't had announcements from here, but I'm hearing whispered of Lisa Waitman going to Berlin, Sinead to Melbourne, Izzy Bat Doyle also to Melbourne, Louis McAfee to Valencia. And Croker and Andy Buchanan to Fukuoka in December. Ooh, Fukuoka. So all big names, big races, people going in that direction. Have you get... guys heard anything? Any whispers? No, I'd, I'd heard about Lisa. I think she may have even mentioned it on her post-race interview yesterday with um, at Sunshine Coast about Berlin. Oh, did she really? That's I think good. so. Something official's coming so. in. Because the person that sent that to me is very untrustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> That could be a strange no, record. She, actually, one hundred percent. She did. Oh yeah, no, she did mention that she was heading to Berlin in the interview yesterday. Okay, interesting. Is that, have you? I cannot remember a female Australian marathoner running Berlin. Pashley. Ellie, Ellie Pashley, when we were over there. Yeah, but was she like Australian record shape? Like, could potentially go for something then? No, that was Ali pre. Like, that long, was her she's breakthrough. Come a long wasn't way it? Since, she's come a long way since then. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I meant kind of like. Yeah. yeah, no offense I know, to we Ali know what at the time. You know what I meant? Yeah, we, they often go to London, New York, um, Chicago. Lisa's been to it over the years. I haven't seen people at Berlin oh, before. Berlin, you know how fast this oh, is. Oh, yeah, this, this is exciting. It is different there. As Christian would say, it is something else. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Well, very good for you. Have, have you heard anything about Sinead at Melbourne? No. No, nah, haven't heard that. Not privy yeah. to this stuff. Brady, yeah. the whispers come to you through your channels. Well, the whisper I got is part of it being a Nike event, and she's a Nike athlete. They want her win oh, in yeah. Melbourne. Nike, yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. So that's it. Could be something there. And right. our man Louis Valencia. Yeah. And Croker and Buchanan, the two Bendigo bats. Well, boys I might off ha- to Japan together. I might have to jump in Andy's suitcase to get a start. <laughs> oh no, not more bad news, is there? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how. Okay. You, I don't even know how you enter Fukuoka. I, I can't find any information yet. Okay. Oh, yeah. Bad news from Valencia. Moose, he got knocked back because he wasn't quick enough. Who, Croker? Yeah. Yep. Do we, were we on air last week when we said that? Mate, yeah. that was a while ago. He's run 217. Yeah, exactly. That, that's like Sean Crichton signing up saying, I'm a 210 man. <laughs> <laughs> can, I get a, can I get some drinks on the table? Yeah. Well, Brady, like, that, and this is actually the, the tough thing about, like, even Brady, he's going to Valencia. But he's not going to get any drinks put out, which, like, does change the dynamic of the marathon in terms of, like, if you don't have somebody handing you drinks. Mm. Like, that's a that, that's a lot that, you know, we not, we haven't had to deal with in a lot of our marathons. I reckon you could – I reckon there'd be a, a listener that's in Valencia who is just putting – go, I got you, Brady. That I'll, is really what I'm banking on. Yeah. No, I reckon you'll get that for sure. I reckon I'll find someone. Yeah. Well, who's who's Louis got drinks? Does he? He's got an elite start, I think. He's um, I think he's getting looked after. Whereas I've just got the start, the bib. Yeah. So, but that's okay. Be good experience. It's not that but, bad. I mean, if you could, those gels, on the weather. If, you gel, if you're just yeah. on gels, that's all right, and you get enough fluid in. Doable. Yeah. Doable. Yeah. For the for the for the experience, I think it's doable. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you about my week that will go back to this. I had a big week of training because there was no racing on, so I did 60 minutes on Monday morning. And same thing, Moose, just in my Strava notes here, I just had not bad written. Like, I didn't feel banged yeah. up from the 10K road race. Pretty um, conditioned, I reckon, after cross. Like, Yeah, do you think so? Yeah, you I reckon... can't say the shoes because sometimes we pull up poorly from the shoes. Like, it's, yeah, maybe that's the whole thing. You're used to wearing spikes on hard cross country and wet cross country courses, and this was and only 10K, so over pretty quick. Yep. Um, so it felt good, 31 minutes in the afternoon at 4.35 pace. I still decided to push the workout back to the Wednesday just to be safe. So I did an hour 15 on the Tuesday morning at 4.35 pace and 7K in the afternoon at 4.27. And then I met up with Archie. We're kind of merely back on the same program. He's had a bit of an Achilles issue the last couple of months, but he's back rolling now. Ran pretty well at Albert Park as well. So... Um, we, yeah, the first time we trained together and actually doing a workout together in ages. I did five by two k, he did five by a mile. So he ended his rep four hundred meters earlier, and then um, we kind of caught back up in the recovery. Kind of hovered around three fourteen pace for the two kers off ninety seconds jog. So that was nice. I just love that pace. That kind of I'm calling it threshold pace. Um, you know, it's it's early in the morning. It's obviously a lot slower than what I can run for an hour. But I think given how early it is in the morning and you're in heavy training, um, I think going slower instead of faster is better for your threshold work. And um, yeah, enjoyed that workout with him, getting to share the lead and do all those kind of things. Because I've been doing a lot of work solo recently. So um, yeah, that was good Wednesday. Got out for an Arvo, 32 minutes at 4.34s. Thursday, got the medium long run out to two hours. Um, this was good. Went out to the... Uh, the five mile it's called so it's five miles out from Moama this uh, mountain bike um, track single trail kind of run out there do a lap of that and then um, come back in so that was 28 and a half k at 4.14s I, um, I re-listened to that Pusha T album moose it's good mm. slept on it it's, every time I play it it gets better I listened to it once only so did I and then I've yeah well, I've got back to it and it's like it's good so um, that was good. And then only one run when I've put that out to two hours now. I'm not going to double on the Thursday. Friday, easy hour in the morning, easy half an hour in the afternoon. Second workout of the week was Saturday morning. Got out for some two-minute efforts, did eight of them, just um, two minutes down a straight road. Just kind of really shuffle jog for a minute and then come back again. Kind of hovering around three-minute pace. Um then with the minute jog, just yeah, as I said, nice and nice and easy. I like two minute reps, like they're over pretty quick, but at the same time you you're doing a bit of work. Easy in the afternoon on Saturday, and then two and a half hours on Sunday. Had uh, Glenn and Archie there. Archie was there for ninety minutes. Glenn was there for two hours, and then I just uh, yeah banged out thirty minutes by myself at the end there. It was nice. We were going to go into the forest, but we had a lot of rain on Friday night, and everything was kind of washed out. So. A bit of a local bike 
track action, but um, yeah, 36.6K, 407s, a good week, a week of 180.5 kilometers. So if I can string a few of those together, and my thinking is to try and get those those long runs out now, um, kind of try and make two hours midweek a bit of a uh, habit to get into, and then two and a half hours on the Sunday, and then worry about you know getting some marathon specific work done because I still think I think I'm 15 weeks from Valencia, so plenty of time. But I want to kind of lay that foundation now because uh, you know the strength side of thing is my weakness, so I just want to try and get as strong as possible to yeah. be able to cover cover the 42k without um yeah without fading in the last four or five k. So are you worried about the uh re- we'll call it the re- I mean you you said last week on the show the regression that you've kind of gone through. Are you worried about that without taking a, a rest and letting your yourself kind of reset before entering mm. a marathon block? Yeah, good point. Like just writing off. I hadn't really thought about it too much because because I was looking at the weeks as in like the race weeks when I have been dropping the K's leading into the race as like a bit of a frustration to then not be able to do good training. Whereas I probably need to, I might see how this week goes at Ballarat 15K. And if I'm like, if I'm tired and like I've made another regression, I might just go, you know what, let's just have 10 days of low mileage and full reset before I go into a, a 13, 14 week. And even if I just do, if the 10 days are easy and still do one decent long run in there. Um, yeah, yeah, good point. No, I hadn't really, I wasn't worried about it because I hadn't really thought about it, but it might be something to consider. I w- if, if I were you, this is what I would do. If, if, if I was in the same position, I would take a week where I, I run maybe 50K and I would, mm. I would pretty much just recover. I might run 20 to 30 minutes a day only yeah, um do a couple of strides that kind of stuff yeah I, I basically almost like fully recover um let yourself mentally drop down don't feel like you have to go out for a run if you don't want to that week because you're about to enter the most mentally emotionally draining eight weeks of all sorts of training um plus physically demanding higher mileage longer long runs you'll be depleted more often you'll be fatigued I, I I don't think you can just lump that on onto the end of a cross country season when you're already complaining of fatigue and and dropping yeah. fitness and been up for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Carly's going back to work soon, so I'm at home with the kids a couple of days a week. So that's another big stress and lifestyle change as well. So um, yeah, yeah. Good point. I hadn't thought about that. Croaks, where were you last week suggesting that? You and Christian too busy. Be about building strength. Well, we got, in tr- long got, in, got in trouble last time I had a crack at you, so yeah, better, well, off, better, crack. Off, better was, off saying nothing. Just steered it in the right direction there, Moose did. Yeah, something to consider, Moose. That is something to consider, and I think I will because time is on my side. Like, it's, um, yeah, there's plenty of time to Valencia. Yeah. Do need to book some flights and accommodation, though. That's something I've got to do. But anyway, let's thank some Patreon supporters because I've got a guest coming in in about five minutes, boys. Just messaged her and said, hey, going to be a bit later than we uh, anticipated because we do like to run behind time on this show. So let's thank some Patreon supporters, and then we'll get to her in running news. Go first, Croaks. All right. I've got Nicholas Bowling. Uh, Nicholas lives in Canberra. He's an extremely intelligent-looking fella, uh, according to his Strava profile picture. Uh, must be a Canberra thing. Uh, he's vice president um, of IT and security at Tessitura and used to be chief technology officer at the Sydney Opera House. He's run 2018 at Mount Ainsley Park Run, which is not a fast park run course. So if he goes to like Yerubi or, uh, or Burley Griffin, he'll run significantly faster. Uh, 88 minutes at the Canberra Times Half Marathon and 401 at Glenbrook Marathon. Doesn't mind an ultra and did six foot track uh, back in 2018. So thanks for your support, Nicholas. Smart guy, isn't he? Yeah. Smart guy. Some very intelligent Patreon supporters we've got. Moose, who you got? I've got Dan Lauer Schumacher. Um, Anyone else want to have a crack at that? That's pretty good. Good work, Moose. Um, From Minneapolis in the USA. Uh, he's a senior real estate project coordinator. Um, has a wonderful wife, son, and daughter. Is that your judgment, Brady? 
Uh, that would be off his LinkedIn profile. Okay. Be creepy if I was saying something. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought. How would you know? Um, he is also passionate about running. Well, yep, that's why he's a patron on the running <laughs> podcast. Medium format film photography. Don't know what that means. And vinyl records. So I'm on, I'm on the page there with with Dan for the vinyl records. Uh, 38 years old now. Um, just a young fella compared to Crokes, training to beat his 24-year-old PBs. Wait, that means he was a kid. No, as a 24-year-old, these were his PBs. He's gone back into running after a big break and trying to beat them. Right, yeah, okay. Um, 1602 5K, 34.32 for 10, 118 half, 234 marathoner. Thank you, Dan. Pretty even across the board there. Some mm. good PBs. Thank you, Dan. I'm going to thank Phil Bruckmeyer from Berlin, Germany. We're going all over the world today. Um, but maybe a New Zealand fella originally. I only found one result from him, and it was from the 2014 Round the Bay. I think that's a race over there in New Zealand. He did that in 36 minutes and 22 seconds. Very quiet on a line, but it, be, it could be because he's the manager of music publishing and partnerships at YouTube. Um, so an employee of Google, Google owns YouTube, and possibly used to work for Red Bull. So how's that, fellas? Big dog. Look at those three right. jobs that our three Patreon supporters have tonight, and just Jeez. be like, they are supporting us to create this uh, inside running podcast that we're very grateful for. Big dogs. Some very intelligent men there. Thank you to all our Patreon supporters over there on uh, patreon.com forward slash inside running podcast. Three different tiers you can sign up for to support the show to help it come out each and every week with the lowest one being $5. So if uh, a month's worth of content is worth $5 of your money, we would greatly appreciate you. Uh, supporting the Inside Running Podcast and keeping the show alive each and every week. And it is a significant show this week because it's episode 250. So um, a massive thank you to all those Patreon supporters who do support the show because I can guarantee you there's no way I'd still be sitting here in my shed recording this for the 250th time if we didn't have their generous support. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Uh, Bradley, I might throw to you for the running news, the City to Surf news, while I get our guest in the conversation. Uh, yep, so we had the City to Surf yesterday, uh, the iconic event that runs from the centre of Sydney out to Bondi Beach. Um, Liam Adams backed up after his fourth place at Com Games to win the men's event in 41 14. Ed Goddard second in 41.28, and then Andre Waring uh, came up from Victoria to take the bronze in 42.27. And then in the women's, uh, Leanne Pompiani won the race in 45.49, which is the third fastest time ever by female on that course. So two seconds off Lisa Ondiecki. Um, and uh, yeah, so Susie Power has the quickest time on that course for female. Do you know Chloe, what it is, correct? Uh, it? Low, low 45s. I'll get it now while we talk. Yeah, um, 46.18 for Chloe Ty, who was second, and uh, Ainsley Van Graham was third in 47.05. Susie Power, 45.08, at least on 45.47. That is so, fast, isn't it? Fast times and big run by Leanne Pompiani, and she joins us now from Canberra, I think, maybe still in Sydney. Leanne, thanks for giving up some time for the Inside Running Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Can you, you hear me okay? N- yeah, we can hear you fine. Thanks for uh, giving up some time, and well done on the win yesterday, and the fast time as well, third fastest all time. You must be stoked with it. Yeah, I am pretty happy with that. I um, Yeah, just hearing you talk about the, uh, the race record, I did know that before going into it, so... That was definitely a, a goal of mine to get in that 45-minute range because I knew not many women had. So, yeah, happy with that. And how did it pan out? Like, we don't have the coverage that we're used to at the City to Surf, so could you please give us some, like, details about what happened in the race? Like, a, a clear win in the end, but was it always like that from the gun? Um, yeah, so took it out with Ainsley on my left, and she was hammering the downhills at the start, so I was a bit worried. Um, yeah. But um, I held on pretty much most of it uh, in the lead. And then I, I think I knew my strengths were going to be the hills. So I thought I better make the most of it and uh, push these and see if I can 
yeah, burn some people. And then how early, like, was the break? When did you start burning people? Um, it's hard to know. I think it was about, well, maybe 5K in. Um, but then it, it's always handy for women because we've always got men running around with us too. So um, I had a lot of people to catch. There were a lot of people, um, a lot of men fading mm. when it got to Heartbreak Hill. So, <laughs> so that was good. Some cards, yeah. And was it like a running scared over the last couple of Ks or you thought like you got some feedback that to know that you like had it sewn up and could enjoy it a bit? <laughs> I was running scared, especially because uh, racing against Chloe Ty, because I raced her uh, a few weeks ago at Sydney Harbour 10 and she sort of caught me a little bit off guard there. So I was, I was running scared. I didn't want to look back because I thought looking back, you know, if there was someone right behind me and they saw me looking back, that might look like weakness. <laughs> but um. Yeah, and and also it's hard because lots of males around, so you can hear you can hear breathing coming up behind you, and you don't know if that's a male or female. So I sort of I was telling myself, um, don't let your guard down at any time here because anyone could be right there. But I did yeah. have being city of the surf, so good having people along the course the whole way, um, and it, it was handy having you know some people were yelling at me, oh you know you've got eighty meters on second place, so I didn't need to look back anyway. Um, yeah. Hey, Le- Leanne, congrats on the run. Um, as you mentioned, like Chloe got over the top of you at the Sydney Harbour 10K. Was there anything that you changed in training between then and now um, to ensure that you got over the top of her at Sydney to surf? Um, nothing really in training. I think it was just more of a mindset sort of shift. Like I know, um, I know Brady was talking, I think it was last week, so saying when you're racing so often, it's hard to – mentally be at your best each race and I think Sydney Harbour well one I didn't know Chloe Ty was going to show up but um I think yeah I wasn't quite as sharp and focused for Sydney Harbour and then I knew City to Surf I mean we all know that 14k is a bit of a nothing distance but the race winning the race is a big deal so that's what I wanted and so mentally it's a little bit more switched on for this one what did it mean to you to win it? Because it's it's probably the race in Australia that anyone who doesn't know anything about running still knows the City of the Surf. And now your name, like you, you can flex big time now saying you won that race. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, Batuta Advocate was doing articles about it today. It's that big. Yeah. I mean, I was sort of saying, oh, I think, I feel like I'm getting a little bit too much attention for what it was. But um, that's sort of what I was talking to my, um, why my coach, Des, wanted me to do it. If you get the win here, it just sort of boosts your profile a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, very pleased to get the win. Well, I think the time, like, that adds more credibility amongst the, the running community as well because it was so quick. So, yeah, well done there. Um, can you tell us about, like, what training does look like? Can you give us, like, maybe a standard week of training, what it looks like for you and Des? Yeah, so standard week, um, if I'm in a full week of training with, yeah, no races coming up, I'll run maybe 150 to 160K uh, with your standard Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday session um, and long run about 28 to 30K. Um, and definitely one, what Des likes to do because uh, he comes sort of from that era of, you know, Deke. He ran with Deke and sort of, yeah, that group. Um, so Saturdays we do a lot of sort of long, hard pushing hills, if that makes sense, uh, like surging hills. So it's all continuous, but every time you hit a hill, you're just surging. Um, but yeah, one week, week to week, it doesn't look exactly the same. That's what I like about Des's program. But, um, yeah, generally a, a track session, a faster session, a threshold session on Thursday and then Saturday will be some sort of either hills or workout yeah and you talked about I, I had this down to pick your brain on it and you kind of referred to it before but you've had a lot of hard races this season as well and you've come up against some quality opposition like Lisa at the Sydney 10 Jess at yeah. Launceston 10 Chloe at the Sydney Harbour 10 um, you know you won the Gold Coast 10 and I think you ran a half marathon in there at Sydney Morning Herald as well yeah. like how are you finding it and how's the body and um, yeah, any secrets there to any other listeners who are out there trying to keep themselves up for a longer period of time with the over, I guess, becoming post COVID too, people are taking the opportunity to race more. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, um, so I got injured earlier in the year before the national track championships. Um, 
and then I had, I had six weeks of training and then I ran that 1525 on the track, which came as a very big surprise for me. I was, I was expecting to run 16 minutes on that night. So it's come down to run a PB off, off an injury was, um, I was really happy with that. And then I've just been consistent, but yeah, like I was saying, it's, it is hard. Like I, I am fit at the moment, so I want to race, but it is hard to be mentally, um, sharp for every race. Um, so I've sort of had to, you know, yeah, not get too disappointed with races that, you know, like Sydney Harbour, 10K, that was um, a good run, but not my best. Um, so then it was sort of, yeah, just sort of reset a little bit and then put a little bit more energy into sort of mental energy into the ones, into the next one. And the, um, and yes, I have come second a lot <laughs> in the past few months. It's sort of a bit of a, um, a bit of a joke of mine. So saying if there was a gold medal for the most second place finishes, I'd, I'd have that. <laughs> Quality Wait. people you're racing though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, um, there's, you know, I'm not, I'm not mad about coming second to the people I've come second to. Yeah, you're, you're in an era, Leanne, where like female distance running hasn't been as strong as it has ever at the moment, um, and and so you see what our marathoners are doing, but even over the shorter distances, your PBs. In some generations, you would have been one of the best, or well, in the top sort of two or three in the country, um, like including those that are traveling overseas and everything. Uh, these days, we have like an incredible batch coming through. What do you need to do to, to make the step into an Australian singlet? What do you need to do different from what you're currently doing? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think it's just keep doing what I'm doing, but with no interruptions. Mm, um, that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. I, I think there's there's no sort of big step or big sort of difference in training apart from just don't get injured and try to not get sick. <laughs> yeah. No, that's very fair. Yeah, I've, um, I've got one for you. Just interested to know where your running is heading over the next couple of years because you said that you're running 150 plus K a week. You're seated to surf, you know, traditionally seated to surf. Um, the people that run well over half marathon and marathons tend to run well at seated to surf. So the fact that you ran so well at seated to surf, you've run a 70, 40 half and you're running big mileage are we going to see you move up to more half marathon marathon stuff over the next 12 months? Um, yeah, potentially. I think, um, like I still obviously want to work on the 5k, 10k. Um, and I've, Bathurst World Cross Country Champs is definitely on my list of teams I want to make. Um, so I'll be, I'll be preparing for that one first, but then cross country, 10k cross country is similar to sort of half marathon training anyway um but yeah potentially sort of closer towards end of next year um look at maybe a marathon um but yeah you're right the, the longer distances definitely seems where i'm seems to be where i'm i'm most suited to well yeah because i looked at the qualifiers today to remind myself 30 30 for the 10k 228 for the marathon um, the 30-30 is pretty quick, and that's uh, obviously come down in time recently. This is yeah, the Paris Olympics. That. Yeah, I'm talking about now. Are you and your coach or the management or whatever looking at, um, you know, how many people, how many roll-down spots there would potentially be? Because I think of, like, the Sarah Klein example at the World Champs this year. Like, you can, not, you can just miss the time, and I think you're well and truly capable of 228, but that could potentially be where the singlet's going to come from, um, a roll-down spot or, or the marathon hitting that time. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, when I saw those times, I thought there will be more, it will be more, you know, focused towards getting, um, yeah, points. And I think, depending on, I mean, obviously, I it's sort of only recently I've sort of started to feel like I'm competitive, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, I, I sort of can be in the mix. Mm. Um, so I think it's going to, and it's going to come down to, you know what opportunities come up and if if it's a marathon it's probably going to be i mean i hate to say this but it probably will be overseas um potentially probably something like japan or yeah um yeah so i don't know i sort of just taking obviously there's like a few, few things yeah i'd love to make world champs next year and i think the roll down spot 
if we can sort of if we if we use that and we plan it, um, hopefully I can make that team. Yeah, and National Cross in I think we just done two weeks time. You'll be heading there, Adelaide. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exciting. I'm not sure if I've seen an ACT team announced yet. Is there one, Croaks? Have you seen that? <laughs> um. Yeah, there's, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. I don't think it's probably a full team, but there'll be a, yeah, there'll be a team. Okay. Then you need four to score, don't you? Yeah, I'll be running for New South Wales, though, this time around. Um, okay. Yeah, because I, I ran Gold, Gold Coast was on the same day as ACT Cross Country, mm-hmm. and I didn't realise that the nominations closed that night, so... I all right. I've, 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 I've run for New South Wales when I've lived in Canberra. So I <laughs> couldn't couldn't take the email. Me. Twelve hours later, for the best runner in the state. And um, <laughs> what's what's after National Cross, Leanne? Will you do like Melbourne Half? Yeah, I did. I did bring this up with um, Des. I said, "Oh, should I do it?" Um, it is it is a good one, but I think I just need to take a step back from racing for a little bit and just get some weeks in training, and then. I have locked myself in with Welshie for uh, Bernie 10, so at the end of October. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and also I think my next half, we didn't realise last time that Melbourne half wasn't certified, so I think we want one that's, yeah. <laughs> that's weird, isn't it? I was looking at your profile today and, I um, yeah, I saw that that wasn't listed as your PB, but then when yeah. I went through the results, I'm like, oh, Melbourne, Melbourne surely. Yeah, I'm not sure why... Yeah, that would have happened. Yeah, I don't know if it is certified or yeah. Anyway, someone smarter than us can sort that out. Uh, <laughs> yep. My last one before I give the boys their final questions is: uh, all Asics kit yesterday? Is that like just what you pulled out of the wardrobe, or like a potential new sponsor there? What's any any developments? Um, nothing. No, nothing formal yet. They sort of just okay. sent me some stuff, and I said yes to free gear of course because <laughs> um but yeah obviously wearing the shoes and i love the shoes the meta speed sky plus um yeah so nothing formal no not yet and, and, and club lime sponsoring you now so we're on the uh, singlet <laughs> i know you, i know you work at club lime but how long yes. uh, how long have they been sponsoring you for uh not long we got that um last week we got that sorted last week but yeah so i work for club lime and they've jumped on board to help me out a bit with financially Nice work. Congratulations. Oh, that's <laughs> Thank that's, you. That's the local gym, isn't it, Croaks? Yeah. 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 Two oh. weeks time, Moose, you'll see Croaks rolling around in a club of lime singlet. <laughs> yeah. A mulligan singlet. You'd already have a free membership, for sure. <laughs> um, do you need an agent now, Leanne? Is that the next step for you to get into these races? Um, uh, yeah. See, I, I feel like, I'm, yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I possibly do. I don't really know how to go about it. I know, I mean, obviously... We know people with agents, so whether we just, yeah, put my name out there and, and get in contact with them. But I think, yes, if I want to be trying to get into these uh, these races overseas soon, I will think I'll need to <laughs> be yeah. a little proactive. Especially with the uh, points stuff. Yeah. For, um, yeah, like the drop downs and all that. Getting yeah. into those teams might be, um, seems like having an agent would be beneficial. Yeah, because that stuff still confuses me as well. So, <laughs> yeah, you got to play. You got to play the system, don't you? Know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions, boys? Before we let Leanne enjoy a Monday night? No, not for me. Just congratulations and um, yeah, all the best for the next twelve months and and even uh, further into the future. It's an exciting time just seeing your progression. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Kudos. I've got, I got one last one, Leanne. Who, do you know who the main competition could be at National Cross Country? Anyone you're concerned about? Um, I did hear Izzy Bat Doyle's going to be, obviously, from Adelaide. Um, so she's going to be doing it. So um, I think it could be a good battle with her. Yeah. Coming off a track season, though. I reckon you got the road strength. <laughs> yeah. I got the Canberra Hills in my legs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks again for your time for the Inside Run podcast tonight. Thank you. See you, Leanne. Thanks, Leanne. Cheers. A big thanks to the team at Glossily Sport for sponsoring this week's episode. Glossily Sport is the new self-care company on the block, founded by three Australian female track athletes. Their first product, Ready Sweat Glow, is an innovative and natural dry shampoo mist. Sweat tested by Olympic athletes, Ready Sweat Glow is designed to refresh hair after a workout. With ingredients like bamboo stem silica powders, and prebiotics from Noni plant extract, it not only saves you time, but it's good for your hair. Now we can't promise Ready Sweat Glow will make you run faster, 
but it will speed up your post-run routine. Perfect for Sunday long run brunch. Get yours at glossolysport.com.au and use the code RUNNING20 for 20% off. Monaco Diamond League boys, do you want to go there next? This was on uh, Thursday, Friday, I think our time. We had Amy Cashin in the 3K stable chase. She ran 924.1 for 8th. Uh, 1,500 metres was an interesting race because Faith Kep Yagon was going for the world record. I'm going to say that she had a pacemaker until oh, maybe 900 metres, maybe 800 metres. Yeah, do you reckon 800, 850 croaks? Oh, I, haven't, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it's, it? No, Jeez. like Monaco really um, snuck up on me. Like I, I actually forgot to record it. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon it was 900. I reckon she got she got... She left them with uh, a lap and a half to go. So she had to do a bit solo. She was going for the world record, which was 350.07 by Dababa, and she ran 350.3. So just missed the world record there. We had uh, Georgia Griffith. She was in the same race. She ran 4 flat point nine, and Jess Hull was one position behind her, so 7th and 8th, and she ran 401.7. Um, and same thing, you, the, the camera was on Faith Kibiega out the front there and you couldn't really see what was going on in the background, but they kind of flashed up the positions, you know how they do that in the bottom corner? And it mm. looked like Georgia was like second, third, and then probably faded a bit over. If it was her, I could. the footage I was watching was so hard to actually see who was there. Um, so it looked like she made a move at probably that 600, 500 to go and, and uh, got away from a lot of the girls who did end up breaking um, four minutes and just maybe got swamped a bit in the last 100, 150. But I couldn't see it. Um, yeah, much footage there. But another good run for Georgia and another consistent one for Jess. 3K was on. Stewie was in there. He was 12th in at 743.3. American record went down. And um, Therry, Nick Her, you, you, Wano. He, uh, the Brunei athlete, he ran 7.25. I'd never personally heard of him before this race, and then I saw 7.25, and I'm like, whoa, this is quick. Uh, but he was ninth at World Cross in 2019. Does have a 3.37, 1,500-meter PB, though, so he's going to absolutely smack that next he's, time he races. He's from Burundi. What did I say? Brunei? Yeah. <laughs> That's a completely like, different spot, isn't it? Brunei's up there. Yeah, the Bruno's up near Indonesia. Yeah. And Brady, you um, you cut out when you mentioned his name. Can you have another go, please? I don't think I did cut out at all. Would you like to have a go at it? No, no. I'll just it was go. one of the ones I started, and then I'm looking ahead going, this is really difficult. Nick Dito, we are Nao. I reckon that's a better um, attempt there. So fast time, name to watch, um, and not from Bruno. That is a, a complete... I thought I copy and pasted this. Maybe someone from Let's Run's got that wrong and I've just copy and pasted the wrong stuff. Name to watch. He ran 7.25 for uh, 3K. And then a non-Diamond League event was the 800 metres there. Abby Caldwell was fifth. She ran at 159.3 PB for her. First time under two minutes. And uh, fifth all-time Australian. And Lyndon Hall was seventh in 2 flat point four. Any comments there, boys? Abby Caldwell, probably the standout. Yeah, still rolling along. Stewie, we, you know, we kind of thought he was on the up, but then he got sick in between World Champs and um, Comp Games, didn't he, and had to withdraw from the 1500, and maybe still a bit of sickness there because a bit off his best. Yeah, it's been a rough, rough year for Stewie. Isn't it, yeah. Um, started but, sick and kind of still sick. But also, I think it just goes to show, like, which, you know, anybody that's listened to our show for the last five years just understands the ups and downs you have with running and you know like stewie last year like was absolutely killing everything and then like it can turn around so quickly with a bit of sickness or injury Mm. yeah you um we kind of skip over what abby caldwell just ran fifth australian all time and ladies have been running 800s for a very long time Mm. that is actually incredible when you stop and think about that the fifth fastest the, yeah. ever. And she's 21. Yeah, she's that's 21. right. Like, Who were the four in front of her? So Cat Bissett, Lyndon Hall. Tamsin. Um, Tamsin. Charlene Randina. Randina. Has Jess I, I think it, broken two? I think it was Charlene Rand because that was the one that, remember Tamsin was always chasing the Aussie record, and I think it was, um, yeah, Randina. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and fact, no, fact I've check got it, that. I've got it right here. Um, How do you have that shit so quick? I I have it saved on my uh, desktop because I look at it that often. And I actually, I do, I do want to um, talk to you boys about something while I've got it opened here because I was doing some research the other day. 
Uh, that's the 1K, the 800 metres. Yeah, Bisset, Rendine the second, Lewis Hall, Margaret Crowley was oh, 159.7. What was Caldwell? 159.3. So she jumped Mark Crowley. Mm. Maddie Pape, remember that name? Yeah, yep. 2008. She was. Uh, she's also been under two. Judy Pollock, and then yeah, Abby Caldwell jumps from. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe she was eighth to fifth. Fact, fact for you here though, fellas. I was doing some research the other day. Had this um, doing a bit of doing a bit of work behind the scenes, and I had a look at the females marathoning top 25 times of all time. Now you heard that. So the top 25 women's marathon performances. How many of them? do you think are in the last uh, 10 years? Maybe this is 15 years. I should. This is why I was, should have had this stuff planned. We're talking Australian or worldwide? Australian, yeah, Australian. Australian rankings I'm looking at in front of me. So how many uh, of the top, say it again. How many? So I've got the top 25 women marathon Australian times of all time in front of me. How many of them do you think got in there in the last 10 years so that this means that like people can have two two entries no, in. Not, not just one name oh one athlete okay yeah yep. so benita's only here once yeah okay uh in what what period in the last how many years no, of all time oh, yeah no, no but, oh, but, yeah. but how many but in the last 10 years how many have got into that top 25 uh it would be over half oh yeah in 12 didn't ask mm. Moose then. Should have asked Moose what it is. Guess what? I was about 12. To say 12. <laughs> 12 yeah. out of 25 12. have got in. I and mean, it's all the names talking about. Diver Wellings. Mm. Um, I've just gone away from that. Millie, so Millie Clark. Millie Clark. Pashley, Lisa, 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 Lisa Waitman. Pashley. Yeah. Yep. Um, even Maloney. like Maloney. Even um, people like uh cassie fian like she's very close to 25th down there marnie ponton nikki chapel sarah klein mm. celia sullihan oh so that whoa whoa yeah hold on who is a name celia sullihan exactly haven't heard that name for a while one melbourne didn't she my god that girl was winning everything she she won zadapak didn't she zadapak that year or did she get second mm. oh, she anyway would. so she... i went and did the same thing with the men looked mm. up the top 25 how many do you reckon have gone in here the last 10 years? Mm. Remember, 12 women got in. How many men do you reckon have Three. gone in? Three. Three or four? Four. Adams, Robertson, Jack Rayner, Shelley. Okay. Yeah. So why is that? Is it because women's marathoning's improved? Like, more accessible? More women do marathons? They step up earlier? I was just like, oh, that's an interesting contrast there. Precedent? Yeah. Also, uh, Opportunity. Maybe, maybe are there women running with men in races more? I mean, this is a bit of a cop out, but if it was only women's marathoning at the time, were they um, were they only running without paces, um, or are they running with pacing now? Mm. Yeah, uh, that's not. I don't think that's fair because I think it's way too biased the results for that um, for that to happen, but. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's more. I, I was looking it up because I was. I don't. Th I think the men maybe get a hard time sometimes. Like, why aren't we breaking Deke's record? Why are we not getting up there? But then I started looking at it. I'm like, maybe the girls have just got. Like, yeah. yes, they're having amazing performances, but there's other little factors that are contributing to that as well. Girls are incredible right now. That's and I think it is. It it it's what do you call it? Rising tide lifts all, lifts all ships. ships. Yeah. I, I I honestly think it is that. And I think it started when we started, like, it, it normally comes after a bad patch too, doesn't it? Like when we saw ladies getting, well, it was the men too. And, I mean, I was in this boat. It was like the 2017 men's um, world champs team. Yeah, 218 got you on the team. Two, was it no, 219? No, 218. I think um... – uh, Harris Jack, Cole Reavy. Jack yeah, Cole Reavy ran two eighteen, I think, to get yeah. on that one. And, yeah. and there was some com game like was it Com games or world champs where one of them there was a lady who got in with like a two forty two or something. Mm. Um and that it, it's almost been good for the sport because then you get a lot of ladies going, you know what, I'm a chance for a team here. And um I just think that focus maybe goes back on it. I don't I don't know. But it seems like you've got Shelley, you've got 
Robertson, you've got Rayner, all coming after that bad patch. Um, or was Shelley before that? Maybe Shelley was before that. Then you've it's got 2014. His fastest time. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then you've got so you've got then you've got um, Sinead, You've got Celia, Aloise, Jess. All after Virginia. that. Yeah, mm. Pashley. All after that bad patch as well. Um, it's like they rise from the ashes. It's come from nowhere. You're in your moves. Do you know what number you are all time? Uh, I was 59, but I reckon I'm maybe I'm 62 now. No, I've got you 46. Oh, that's not right, I don't think. Tom Decano, just one in front of you. Sean Forrest in front of him. Andrew Lloyd. I don't think that's... Brenton r- Norman, Ben St. Lawrence. This is from Athletes Australia. Huh. This this only includes the um one one marathon, though. Yeah, okay. So they're like, Deke might have had yeah, 10 in another list and then it's pushed you down. I, yeah, I don't know. No, that would be mean I would be way down. I don't know. Maybe I just got it wrong. Hey, go easier on yourself. Put it on your Instagram bio. 46 all the time. Are you Googling now yourself? <laughs> nah, nah. Yes, you are. <laughs> I've got a new laptop. News. I've got to re- do this search history. Julian Spence runner. <laughs> Julian Spence runner. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Monaco Diamond League and a bit of off-topic stuff there. Uh, Sunshine Coast Half Marathon. Moose, you're reading these results out, so get back on the page. I'm read them. Um, yeah, this was the Australian half. They've had this a couple of times now. So, Sunshine Coast, yeah. Well, I mean, Australian marathon champ, half marathon champs, our best half marathon and won it. So that's, um, I mean, well, you could argue our best male and female half marathon has won it. So Brett Robinson won the men's in 62-26. Uh, it's his th- sixth title. Um, he won from Sam McEntee, who was only nine seconds back. So looks like they probably ran together for most of it i don't know i didn't see the was there footage no brett actually made a move i didn't i didn't watch it but i um i heard the interview afterwards he made a move at like 13 14 k and he thought oh yeah great of of the race has sewn up and then he decided to have a look back with like a k to go and he couldn't believe how close smack was yeah um yeah so that's that's a great run from sam like not not known for you know the longer stuff um, but he's back in back in good shape. Yeah, good to see. Um, Liam Budin from Queensland was third in 63.02, so a PB for Liam as well, which is another great time. I believe they go over the hill here as well, and that's a solid hill within this course. Um, the, the, result, the team results, Victoria first, Queensland second, and South Australia third. And then... In the ladies, Lisa Waitman won in sub-70 minutes, 69.51. It's her eighth Australian title. Is that just half-marathon titles? Uh, that was just from Dave Tarbottom, eighth Australian title. No, I think it'd be, be all, all titles. Yeah, it'd be all titles, I all reckon. All titles, And yeah. her third um, fastest time over the half-marathon as well. Yeah, yeah. And she's she ran very – I reckon she's run like sub-69 there. At Sunshine Coast, one year. Remember that year yeah. where Sinead, Ali, and her were all banging away at it. Yeah, and they had the same battle like a month earlier at the Gold Coast. Yes. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it wasn't quite as close this year. Paige Campbell was second, seventy-two fourteen on debut, and Sarah Klein off the World Champs ran seventy-two twenty-six to come back for a PB. So that's pretty good. A month turnaround from a marathon to run a half mm-hmm. PB. It's always a difficult thing to do, come back like that. Five weeks, isn't it, Crocs? Uh, yeah, it? about that. And then, um, what, she's got another, what, six weeks till Berlin. So that's a pretty short turnaround from Gold Coast to Berlin. Yeah, but she's going all right five yeah. weeks after. Oh, yeah, you are talking about Lisa. I was talking about Sarah mm. Klein. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, I was talking about Lisa. But, but yeah, yeah, you're right. Same deal, Klein. though. Same deal. Yeah. yeah. Um, five weeks, three weeks, yeah. Victoria uh, won from Queensland in second and then Western Australia in third. So you're going to say Queensland's probably pretty happy with themselves coming second in both events. Men's New and South women's. Wales not on the podium at all mm, in the no. men's or the women's. See ya. See you later, New South Wales. Poor from they South, South prior- Australia. Prioritise City to Surf, obviously. Send all their big deals there. Just back on City to Surf, I should give a shout-out to our long-time patron supporter, Aiden Hobbs. He ran oh, yeah. 43.23 which is a significant time. He came fifth, but he wore a Superman outfit the whole way. Hmm. You, you know what? This? I I saw this and I'm like, oh yeah, he does this each year. Then I looked at the time. I'm like, fuck, that sounds fast. So I, I've run this one twice. 
I looked at my fastest time. I'm like, yeah. oh, this bloke's beaten me by a lot. Your best time man. was forty four ten. Yeah, it's yeah. About 50 seconds. My <laughs> best is 44 flat, and Croker's ran 43.57. Yeah, right. Ooh, cluster. He's beaten mm. the three of us by a minimum of like 35 seconds, uh, and he wore a super we, suit. We, we were old, like pre super shoes boys. I tell I was them what, that's all we I think. I was happy with my time until Aiden made me look bad. Well, my best time put me 12th that year. I would have finished, I think that time yesterday would have put me seventh, maybe? Eighth? Seventh? Okay. Eighth. Yeah. What that's about that, um, that's that bitter old man stuff? I like from <laughs> no, you just like, you yeah, want but... you want a, the bitter stuff? The course has changed; it's quicker now. I think it's pretty similar, isn't it? No? <laughs> I, I think don't it's know. pretty similar. I'm I'm calling it shorter once that change come in. Yeah, that was good from him. Uh, that is all from running news. So let's go to listen to question, Bradley. All right, hey guys, just a quick question for the show. Not sure if this has been asked before, so sorry if you have to repeat yourselves. Uh, what is the mindset behind the plan of your training program? For example, how do you determine what workouts you do with the paces and distance, as well as how many weekly miles you will do? Do you plan for a specific race or work month by month or even week by week? Keen to know what you put greatest emphasis on. Thanks for putting on a great show. Keep up the awesome work. Sarah or Sarah. 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 From Ballarat Moose. Your mate. Oh, Sarah. Um, all right, well, uh, it's a pretty detailed question. Like, you could answer this with a book, really, like a full-on textbook. So I'll just I'll just go quickly and explain how I would do it, how I look at a training program. I work backwards from my goal race, and my goal race will be determined based on not – my goal race will be determined when – like in terms of um, when it is based on the current position that I'm at and how long I think is a reasonable time to prepare for it. So, for instance, I'm sitting here now and I'm like, I'm going to do a marathon in February. That's probably a good time for me. I'm going to put the race in. Then I'm going to basically work backwards from the race and give little periods of training where the focus will be on a specific thing. So I might go two to three weeks of a taper phase back from the race. And then from there, I might do eight weeks of specific marathon training. And then I might have a recovery week leading into that, as Brady might do right now. And then before that, I'll have a general phase of training where I'll run quite a bit of mileage and I'll do workouts that have a wide variance to them. Um, and, and so that's how I, that's pretty much how I determine training programs. And within that, once you know the focus of that training block, then you can add in the workouts that will achieve the goals you have for that block. And you will look at, in, I mean, if we get a little bit more specific, I'll look at the workout and go, what system do I want to work here? What are the things I want out of this workout? And then you plan the workout around the outcome you want from it. Um, and, and that will be different. There'll be like, you could give 15 examples of that. Um, so the mileage thing, I don't care too much. Um, the mileage is more a result of the weekly program, if that makes sense. The, the, the mileage doesn't make the program. The, the mileage is kind of an outcome of the program. So if I've got someone who's going to run uh, Monday 16K, Tuesday they're going to do 20, Wednesday they're going to be recovering, so they'll do less, Thursday up. Friday a little bit less, Saturday a workout, Sunday long. The mileage is whatever it is. It is quite good to use it as an um, indicator of how much volume someone is doing and then you've got a number that you can base a down week off. So if someone's regularly running 100K a week and you want to schedule a down week, maybe you'll drop 20% and so the, the end of the week might be 80K. Um, so that's sort of why volume's good and that's how I work out mileage. Um, yeah. So what, yeah, the big thing I'm getting out of that is you look at it like a block within a block. Yeah. Holistic, like yep. from the race, where do I want to be at the end of this particular block? How am I, what am I going to do to achieve that? How best am I going to prepare for the next phase of training? Um, so how am I going to prepare for the specific phase and what condition do I want to be in? And that will 
do I want to be strong? Do I want to be fast? Do I want to have heaps of mileage? Do I want to be really fresh? Um, and, and so then you can work out the little variables from that. Yeah, your workouts and paces will be determined about what the focus of that block is. Yeah, the work. Yeah, so the, I mean, <laughs> the workouts will be determined by what you want out of that workout, if that makes sense. So the rest periods will be um, always have a relationship to the paces that you're running yeah, to and the speed and yeah. the duration of the, the 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 splits, the intervals. If you're doing intervals. And the and the the cumulative volume of the session, so they all tie into one another. It's that's what I see commonly is people don't understand what they're doing. So if someone goes out and they're given one k re- repeats, oh, we're doing eight by a k off a minute. Okay, that's like the workout that like we all do. But how fast are their one k's? Yeah, we do them pretty solid. Okay, then if you do, you're doing them at what pace? what what effort oh well we worked it out that it's probably uh 5k pace okay so you're doing eight by 1k at 5k pace so like in my mind you need more recovery than 60 seconds why yeah. you take 60 seconds oh well you ain't you ain't doing eight at 5k pace know. off 60 yeah. seconds <laughs> but but that's the work like it people just don't think of, i don't think people don't think about it enough what they're doing um and it just doesn't it doesn't seem to make sense a lot of the stuff that I see out there in how they come up with a particular workout like the variables don't line up with one another yeah the period of training has a theme and then the workout should match that theme so if it's like a maintenance kind of block where it's like you know you just you work in a few different systems but the idea is is like you just want to string the weeks together and kind of build that foundation and you know not knock anything out of the park but then closer to if it's a marathon, you might start seeing those bigger days with complementing with just a lot of easy recovery. Yeah. Maybe not as big as what Christian spoke about last week, but then there will be like a theme. It's like, hey, these, maybe it's the, the six to the third week out from the marathon where it's like we need to nail some big stuff here and get nutrition right and put the body under a lot of stress that it's going to experience on race day. Yeah, that's just the physical stuff too. Like, it's good to experience some mental, um, some mental adversity throughout the training block. That's that's really important. Again, an understated factor of of training, I think, is putting yourself in unpleasant positions and and becoming comfortable with that. Mm. Croaks, anything else to add there? As you said, we could write a book on yeah. this. We should do that. Wouldn't be a bad business move, boys. I think in, in a way, like simplifying it, the closer you get to your goal race, the more specific the session should be in terms of the paces that you need to run. And then the general phase is about, so for example, let's say you want to run a marathon at three minute 20 per kilometre. As you get closer to the marathon, you're going to be doing a lot more work over an extended period of time at three minute 20 kilometers and so the general phase is getting your body conditioned enough to be able to then do that work in the specific phase um if we're looking at it for me from a like because i don't race that much so i'm just basically generally training all the time i i put most priority on my long run every week and consistent volume because if i look back and i see a 20 week block where i haven't missed a long run um, and I've had like a decent midweek long run and my general volume is quite high. It doesn't really matter what sessions I've done in that period. I know I'm going to actually be pretty fit. Um, but in that period, I try and have one session a week that's more around 60 minute race pace or effort or slower. And then one that's, you know, between probably five and 10 K pace, um, hilly tempos, uh, fart legs. So like a bit of everything, as you said, Brady, just covering all of the systems but for me it's consistent long runs and general volume the individual sessions for me don't really matter that much as long as i've been consistent i'm going to be fit and i'll run pretty well stringing it together avoid injuries good stuff thanks sarah for your patreon support send that question in moose on the loose purchase of the week mm, well i have a little laptop that i'm playing with um got the new macbook air so uh, Google it now. MacBook Air. Oh, I've Google and stuff that you buy. Um, M2. It, 
M2, yeah. Oh, yeah, first thing that drops down on Google. I was hanging out for the M2. Have People no idea. wait for them, isn't it, at the moment? Uh, no. You got it pretty quick. I walked in, I said, you got this? Blake's like, don't know. <laughs> he goes on his website. On, he's, we're in Officeworks, right? I walk in, I mm-hmm. said, do you have this? He goes on officeworks.com.au, literally the site mm-hmm. that I was on in my house. <laughs> <laughs> he searches for it, and then he looks at it, and then he goes, oh, yeah, it says we got one. I'm like, I fucking know you got one. I saw this about half an hour ago at home. How many inch did you get screen? I think there's only one. 13. 13. 13. Yeah, you've, done, you've done your research, actually. Now I'm scrolling down. They're all just 13 inches. Yeah, it's light. It's um, it's a bit faster. Got rid of all the garbage off it, that's for sure. I used to just, like, you know, screenshot everything, send it to people. Oh, I know. Because you send it to us all the time. <laughs> and it saves it on my computer. So I've got these bizarre screenshots from like six years plus just sitting on my desktop. Um, I can't even see the background of my old computer. It's just full of screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> there would actually be quite a funny read um, to go back through and see all this funny shit. But... Haven't you got so much on there though that then it starts going on top of each other? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, Oh, and you don't delete it. No, nah, it's like three oh. layers deep. Um, I just I left it so long where I... I started doing it. I'm like, oh, this is going to take too long. Uh, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to buy a new computer instead. instead. Uh, oh, very good purchase. It'll come in handy. Like clarity for the mics already better. I'm sitting here, got plenty of battery left. Don't have to run off to the um, to the charger. Yeah, you can the, hear the, the keyboard. Yeah, the key- I was going to say the keyboard sounds good, Moose. Yeah, I've got to turn that off. Why is that? Why, is, why does this keyboard know. make noise and the other one didn't? Never heard you type anything in the last 249 <laughs> weeks, and then this week it sounds bit. like you're doing a lot of Googling in the background. You know, so listeners, I'm, I'm if you're still with us, <laughs> sorry tired. about that. Yeah, sorry. That was good. Uh, very good. No moose on the looses. We're moving on. Purchase of the week was good enough. Um, I, there was probably some stuff maybe from the last episode. I remember that, or oh, the junk mile question. I listen to that and I'm like, oh, junk miles. That triggers me a little bit. Junk miles. Was that in the boat? Was that the that was a bonus show? Oh, it was a bonus show. It? Yeah, I listened yeah, to that too. Yeah, it was. Too. Yeah. Um, I'm like, who decides what's a junk ma- junk mile and, and what isn't? Who decides mm. that? Like, because you hear the term junk miles. Oh, this guy runs a lot, but they're junk miles. Like, wh- what's a junk mile? Well, that's what I was trying to explain, mm. that like your long run, just because even if it's slower, it's not a junk mile. Why is a it's... slow run junk mile? Yeah, well, it's, I don't think it is because it's the purpose of the day. Yeah. Like if you're running 445, like if I go out and run 445s, I'm not ashamed that I'm doing junk miles or my pace is going to look slow on Strava because that day I need to run 445s because it's in between a, a race and a workout or a post race or whatever it is. I think hell of a, the, sorry. Let's, I think, let's start shaming slow miles. Well, it's, Don't it's, shame them. I, th- I think where the term came from was like, could you run just as well without doing a particular run? Like, for example, like, Brady, you do doubles like every single like day just about. Yeah, if I can fit them in, yeah. If you were to skip one of those, would you run just as well? If the answer is yes, then maybe that is junk miles. Oh, like, okay, so you're saying junk miles is stuff that you don't need to be doing. Well, you could run just as well without doing it. Yes, yeah, because like, I don't have a lot of talent, so I rely on miles. <laughs> no, I think that's you where the, I mean. But that's I think that's where the, that's where the term, term comes where from. It comes from is that like, do you need to be doing that? Um, yeah. Detriment but, when a run becomes detrimental to your health or fitness. Mm. I don't know, but like, there are some people that run. Uh, when they're injured, to me, that's, I mean, you're running a junk mile because yeah, it's, yeah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not helping you. That's right. It's not, that's, that's essentially yeah. what it is. A junk, a junk mile is any mile you run that is not going to help you. And so that could be that, yeah, if you're already tired and overtrained, going out and running another mile is junk miles because it's not going to help you. Do you, know, yeah. do you know what junk miles are? 8K cool downs after a hard workout. <laughs> Who's doing eight to eight k cool downs? The some people do. Like, do they? Oh, yeah, okay. I did. Well, I did ten k after uh, Launceston half, 
but you know to me that served the purpose of it was also extending my long run because i had a marathon in three weeks or whatever yeah perhaps I, so there you go yeah. maybe not a junk mile for you mm. but if you're fucking you a workout and you're 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 you you're slugging along you're shuffling you're sore you're tired 8k aren't helping you race you. Would, would you know do you know where the great. do you know where the example of that would come in moose if somebody looks at their strava has done their session and they're completely stuffed or done their race or whatever and they see that they're 152k for the week but they want to hit 160 and they're like i'm going to cool down for 8k just to hit, yeah. just to hit 160 that's yeah that's, that's not good miles <laughs> yep junk mile Hey, I do have another bit of news here that I fully forgot to put in the agenda, but I um I missed it, and it's it's worth noting because it's something a bit different. You guys familiar with these backyard ultras? Yeah. Yep. Did you see this over the weekend? Which so one? the concept concept is this was the dead cow gully one. I think it's up in Queensland. Yeah, it's on a um, cattle property. You know what they are, Croaks? You do six point seven k, um, on the hour. So every hour you got to go out and do six point seven k, and you just you keep going until you stop. I think I've heard people call it like last man standing yeah. as well. I yeah. think that's yeah. I think they're called a few different things. So we were talking about because I think I think there's a lot of them happening like all over Australia possibly at the moment. Um, so we were talking about it on a long run, like how many could you possibly do? Like could you do ten? Do sixty seven k? How would you like manage? How would you manage sleep? Your food? Would you just fang it, get over and done with in like twenty two minutes, and then just have a bit of a bit of a rest or would you just take it nice and easy and just roll it into the next one so i think it's quite fascinating anyway then i woke up to a dm this morning so ryan crawford and kevin muller these are two guys that did this one up in queensland over the weekend they went together for uh 58 loops it was and then after the 58th loop kevin walked over to ryan's tent and conceded defeat so then Ryan Crawford had to do the complete, the final loop on his own to be crowned the last one standing, which was going to be his loneliest loop of all. And then he done it. He broke the Australian record. It was 395 kilometers of running. It's insane. 59 loops. It is incredible. I cannot imagine how they do that, how they manage sleep, nutrition, hydration, different weather, doing it throughout the nights. Um, is it all oh, yeah, on Strava talk- and legit? Like, yeah, the is course is the course. No, I think well, it, the, yeah, the courses I think so. can be any sort of distance. I think any terrain. Yeah, but for it to be an Australian record, it needs. But they've, to they've be, got to be distance. The course needs to be legit. Yeah, the, the the thing like that I um, always wonder is: are these blokes have to go to work the next week or what? Like, <laughs> they've seriously ran for fucking three days and nights straight. Can you imagine doing that? Saying up without running from yeah. Friday night to Sunday midday and then rocking up to work one day and trying to be productive. The lack of sleep is w- what would kill me in this thing. Like, I'd get to the point where I'd just be just tired. Like, I need to sleep. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that would. Yeah. Imagine if it takes you a while to get to sleep as well. Like, mm. yeah. I think it's, it's very interesting and I think, yeah. It's very, um, niche, yeah. very niche. Very niche, isn't niche. it? Very niche. And really pushes the boundaries of our human performance. So, it's a bit, uh, quick hip, bit hipster. I could see you doing that, Croaks, coming up, I reckon. A few next so. next couple of years, get your comrades done, your ultras, and then move into that world, grow a big beard, <laughs> suit you a few grey gray hairs in there, a bit of salt and pepper. Yeah. Anyway, that's what's uh, that's the show for this week. Uh, it was a good show having Leanne on there, hearing from her, name we often speak about over the years. What's coming up? Ballarat 15K for you and me, potentially, this weekend, Moose. Yeah, might get there. Round eight, uh, season's coming to a bit of a finish. Uh, that's the only thing I did have coming up, but I did want to mention the Bendiri Aboya documentary on SBS On Demand. Watched that last night. Probably goes for like 25, 30 minutes about her family and how they moved to Australia and then how she moved from the 400 to the 800. Some, um, yeah, really, really good stuff in there. Really enjoyed that. And a lot of people asking about the Sean Crichton interview, which... Um, Christian referred to last week at the end of the episode and so how it works I think on iTunes and Spotify they only have like the most recent 100 episodes up maybe so because this is like yeah episode 250 you probably can only go back to 150 every single episode of the podcast we've done is on um, Podbean so if you just type in Inside Rome Podcast Podbean you get everything there but we're going to re-release just the interview from Sean from episode 5 and 6 
um, sometime this week as well if you want to listen to that in full. I didn't realise that, fellas, that they drop off after like 100 or whatever, so um, there'd be a lot of good content in the interviews I'm talking, not us talking rubbish before them. Um, out there that we could potentially re-release. It's funny. Did you listen to any of it, Crooks? No, I haven't listened. I haven't uh, listened to. Actually, I've not. I've never listened to any of the interviews I've ever done. Oh, really? No, that's it. Too. I started listening to it when I was putting it together, and like you introduce it in the start, and we're just like talking shit. We sound like like all like fifteen year old boys. <laughs> it's quite funny. It's quite funny how we sound. We probably sound exactly the same actually, but it just yeah, looking back was quite interesting. Anyway, what's coming up in your life, uh, Crokes? Uh, not much, just hopefully another week of training and, yeah, nothing much to report. Yep, solid week. Boring. And Moose, obviously you've got your mum's stuff happening, so that's where your mind will be this next week. Yeah, yeah, I'll be in Melbourne tomorrow and then um, hopefully get the end of Ballarat. We'll see how we go. So yeah, you go. Cat season's kind of over now anyway, isn't it, after Albert Park? Well, it didn't help us get to that podium, but you need to have good momentum coming out. We need good momentum still coming into the um, into 2023, which could be the year of the cat. Into the trade period and stuff, yeah. That was, um, you weren't here last week, but the depth at Albert Park. Oh, I was at Albert Park. Fucking hell. You, you come 59th. I like, know. And you, and you ran pretty well. Well, well, I was, I mean, I went under 32. I didn't expect 59th. I didn't feel like I was 59th. I felt like maybe like 30th or something. There's another 20 blokes in there, or another 30 blokes in there. Yeah. Tough. Yeah. I was looking at the results, and the gap for, like, like the top 10 at Bandura to Albert Park was pretty similar. And then after about, like, 15th, 20th, there was just, like, there was a whole 30 guys to just appear and then yeah. drop, all, drop that 30th back to 60th. Yeah. No, it was, it's good. It's great to see. Incredible it's, depth. Wouldn't yeah. mind it being a bit more light on this weekend at Ballarat, hopefully. Don't want that kind of competitiveness again. Podium potential for you this week. A tempo for me. Tempo and oh. won't be racing. What the big pace? dogs back. What the pace? big dogs uh three sixteens, I think we're rolling. Oh. Three fifteens. Three sixteen to three twenties. Nate Stoats got national cross country next week, so he's just doing a bit of a workout from Melbourne, so I might jump in with him. But the big dog's back, so nothing to worry about him bat bat t- town. Mm. He's won there before. He's won it. Has he? Yeah, he won the oh, yeah, he won the year you come, yeah. He did. Anyway, we're rambling on now. Have a good week, boys. Emergency, See you next week. Emergency's just started, boys. Go and do yourself a favour. It's Royal, Royal Melbourne, it is. The oh, emergency well. show. Channel 9. Thank so you. You love it, Crooks. Yeah, you've, really given us, you've really given us an insight to how you spend Monday yeah, night yeah. after recording this show. What do you mean show? after? He's probably been watching it the whole time. No, it's just started now. <laughs> he's so keen to get off air now. Got to go. Yeah. See ya. This is why he's always rushing at 8.45. <laughs> Oh, uh, Patreon supporters, we'll have something bonus for you, working on some friends of the show and a big interview for next week, boys. One of the biggest uh, names in Australia. Not so much Australian distance running, but knows some stuff about distance running. But uh, that's going to be on next week's show, early on Patreon when it gets recorded. See you, boys. Have a good week. See ya. See ya. Same to you. Bye-bye. Now, if you've gotten through this whole episode without buying a bottle of Glossily Sports new dry shampoo, Ready Sweat Glow, do your hair a favour and grab a bottle now. Refreshing your hair in seconds so you can skip the wash, not the workout. Check it out at glossalysport.com.au and use the code RUNNING20 for 20% off.